So welcome to the Lego Football Podcast. You're with David Farini, and we have a very special guest with us today. It is Hakan Sukur. Primarily remembered for his extraordinary ability to poach goals. He was a skilled free kick taker as well. He could soak up pressure and convert penalties and was gifted with a superb aerial ability. He played for Galatasaray from 1992 on and off until 2008, during which he had stints in Italy with Torino, Inter, and Parma. He also played, spent some time in the English Premier League, capped by Turkey 112 times, 51 goals at international level. He was Gala's all-time top scorer. He was the Turkish national team's top scorer. This guy's a legend up there with the best of the best, the Turkish Super League all-time top scorer. Gala's all-time top scorer in European games, 332 career goals in 709 games. Merhaba, Hakan Şükür, welcome to Lego Football and thank you for joining. Thank you, David. A long time ago, I heard in time like this in my in records and goals and all success. But be careful, uh, you you shouldn't go Turkey now if you say in good words and about me, and you can't go in Turkey. I'm sure amongst the Turkish people. I have no problem at okay. all because everybody loves you. And I'm, you know, I, I remember as a fan as well, an immense player. And I'm so glad that you've joined Thank to talk you. today. Now, Italian and buonasera, buongiorno, and English, and good night, good evening, and all of them, and say hello from me. Thank you very much. A, a multilingual, Hakan. Yeah. I understand you're based in the United States of America now, which we will yes. get to a little bit later. Overall, how are you? Nasil Sin, are Nasil you still kicking a ball around? You're still playing a little bit for fun? Yes, um, I can play and sometimes and pick up games, you know. I have a lot of friends here and only enjoy time and not professional. Uh, but I, I love in soccer, you know. Everywhere I can play soccer. Also, I have a lot of um, players and kids, and we are working together. And okay, so there could be a, a, a future Shukar that will come through and play professionally? Yes, I hope so. I hope so. Maybe and for me, a difficult time for me, you know, and my life is very and confused and from Turkey. Um, I'm living here in for seven years in America and with my family. Uh, it was very, very difficult time and seven years because I lose uh, my everything and my everything in Turkey, you know, and dictatorship. Um, my life is started new from, from the beginning, you know, and but we are living here um, uh, I have to protect my mind healthy, you know, and, you know, there are a lot of confused situation about me, but uh, I am okay now. Don't worry. Is everything okay? And my wife and my daughters, my son here, is everything is good now. Good family, the most important thing, obviously. Yes. Yes. You all have priorities in life. It's good to hear that you're doing okay in the USA. Thank and, you, David. Uh, very sorry to hear about your situation as well. And we'll get through this interview and hopefully you can share some of your thoughts. Let's talk about some of your football to begin with. On a world level, you were Turkey's complete attacker. One of the most intelligent strikers of your era, playing alongside some of the very, very best players in history. Cannavaro, Jorge Haji, yes. Javier Zanetti, Christian Vieri, Brazilian Ronaldo. But there is one record in particular that sticks in my mind. And a lot of people at the moment watching the FIFA World Cup in 2022, it's in their mind. You're the current record holder for the fastest goal at the FIFA World Cup. Yes, I remember in that moment, every game I'm watching and after the 11 second and finished game for me because my record is same like this, it continue. I hope so, we'll continue again in same record. I think like this, God gift for me, because and after the 20 years, everybody knows, everybody speaks my goals, you know? 
and record and 11 seconds and get remembered in all peoples and soccer uh, fans. But I am uh, very, very happy because, you know, in soccer, different sports. If you have a lot of money, if you have uh, any opportunity, um, all players can call you. But if you lose your everything and anybody not near you, is right? and difficult, but my score and my goals and very, very important for me. And I am uh, living in America. Everybody knows that and my goals. Is everything is good. Great to hear. Uh, 11 seconds, people at home. Yes. So as Hakan was saying, he waits until the 12th second of the game, gets the remote control and turns the game off. And then he can go about his business for the day Relax. <laughs> this this interview is taking place on a Friday. It's the day before the third versus fourth playoff. It's yes. going to be Morocco and Croatia. And that is actually the game that you scored in, in 2002. It was the South Korean captain, Myung yes. Hung Bo, who was the defender. And you took the ball away from him, put it away on your left foot, passed the, the goalkeeper. I think Woon was the goalkeeper. And it was a pleasure for me a very big pleasure for me as an Italy fan, seeing as though South Korea had infamously eliminated Italy from the tournament. Yes, I remember. I watched I watched this game, but after the Italy, we played together with South Korea. Yeah, it was a very difficult game for us because after the Italy and victory and, um, and South Korea, and it was very difficult, but we won and third place in the World Cup. Third place. Unbelievable. So good for Turkish football. And yeah. South Korea was the host nation playing at home in this game. So a big challenge for you. Yes. You scored the first goal in the first 11 seconds. Congratulations for your goal. And I'm also glad that the referee for your game was not Byron Moreno, the same referee that did Italy and South Korea. So, And hopefully when you left Italy in 2002 and went to England, I hope that the managers and the staff at Parma and Inter thank you for that goal against South Korea as well. So <laughs> we're talk currently talking about World Cup football. Obviously, you are disappointed about Turkey's absence at this World Cup in 2022. And I can empathize with you from an Italian standpoint, being an Italy fan, no Italy, no Turkey. I'm a dis disappointed also like you, an Italian in Turkey, uh, not this World Cup. Italy and all the world and all the tournament in maybe in first actor in World Cup and Europe champion. Last Europe champion, you know, and very disappointed for Italy. But Turkey, um, after 54 years, and we went to World Cup 2002. In other World Cups, we... Uh, didn't join in World Cup. Last time, uh, we, could, we couldn't go again. It was very disappointed because we have a lot of in quality players. We are a good team. But uh, now, in change everything, and together with, and, you know, regime, and regime, and catch everywhere, and under the control regime you know, and political science and different one Turkey situation now. But uh, when I didn't see an Italy, a disappointment, same like my country. Yeah, you know? massive uh, disappointment. I love, I love Italian. I love Italian people. And, you know, all of France is very, very nice. And like my country, you know, it's Carino and different one and good people and smile and and fantastic and atmosphere in stadium is it was very good. But both team this disappointed for me. Both team. Yeah. But if my team and Turkish team if go and uh, World Cup, maybe uh, I'm gonna go and for commentator for Turkish team. I lose any job, and here we spoke a lot of uh, friends and for commentator. And if if Turkey go in World Cup, I got an offer a lot of in television in America, but we didn't go 
but my job is finished. <laughs> Unfortunately, Turkey didn't go or you would have been commentating. Yes. And maybe next time I can commentate the Turkish games in English and you can do it in Turkish. And maybe some guest commentary in English yes from the best Turkish player in history next to me yes, and uh, we can go ahead. I might just point out, we have two other people in this uh, chat that we're talking about and f that have joined us as well. And they're here for uh, not just support, but they are the facilitators of this interview and also here to help me because I speak no Turkish, unfortunately. So, but hopefully if they speak Turkish between themselves, it's nothing bad about me, but I'll find out later. Yeah. Um, so your emergence in the early 1990s into the Turkish national team was perhaps the biggest factor for the speedy elevation of this competitive Turkish national side. Because before the 1990s, Turkey was struggling to qualify. So before Hakan Şükür, there were great Turkish strikers and a few of them even played in Italy but they excelled on an individual level. You brought a more tactical approach, professionalism, strength in the game physically. Uh, you know, Turkey would score great goals and could lead the game, but then would, after five or 10 minutes, lose discipline and then fail to qualify for tournaments. It was kind of like the birth of the modern striker, which introduced pressing, encouraged a fighting spirit, collective style within the national team's attacking game. Working well with your ex-coach, Fatih Terim, who liked all of his players to attack and his forward players to also defend. Is that an accurate assessment of how you were as a player? You know, uh, against South Korea, I had in one goal and record goal in 11 seconds, but I had in two assists, you know, and... My particular is maybe an assist and team player, not a only alone and skills. I had I had an header and pressure. You you told me in different in Hakan Sukur and pressure. Uh, I was an a good player, but um, I was in strong and header and jumping. There was a lot of score like this. Uh, but we catch a good generation and together in others, you know, and before in Galatasaray and together with Fatih Terim and Okan Buruk now in coach in Galatasaray, coach of Galatasaray now. And there was Arif Erdem and Haji Popescu, Tafarel, and there was a lot of quality players. But we showed into Fatih Terim and different team but not tactical formation and struggling together and thinking together. We spoke a lot of time before the game, after the game. Um, there was a good team. And Fatih Terim catch that and good organization and different soccer model, you know, and di different formation. Kur, like Hakan Kur, I never seen other player like me. But mütevazi olmayacağım demek ne demek? I am not going to be humble because um, I was great player, but I played Turkey, you know, a lot of time and national team and good team. There was a good team. But when I played Italy, um, there was a little bit unlucky, unlucky for me. But um, when I came to Torino, you know, and after the Torino, I told uh, to everybody, I am going to come back again, maybe and if you have any target and for champion and good teams, we can do everything. But after Lippi wanted want to me and together with Conte, there was a lot of journalists and newspaper and wrote and a lot of time, Hakan Skur as good player is going to come again in, in Italy. But uh, we spoke uh, to Lippi, but not Inter Milan but for Juventus, 